Good morning, Christian Mission! Good to see you here this morning. It's good to have you here this morning. Our theme, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Psalm 46, which says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he utters his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts, is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge the Hebrew word for be still is Rapha and Rapha is a primitive root is to slacken in many applications literal or figurative remember that QAL and that PL and then and all those are just verb tenses in the Hebrew it's to sink down to sink Drop, to sink, to relax, to abate, to relax, to withdraw, idle, let drop, abandon, relax, refrain, forsake, to let go, to refrain, to let alone, to be quiet, to show oneself slack, to abate, and the King James gives it, abates, uh, cease, consume, draw toward evening, fail, be faint, be wax feeble, forsake, idle, leave, let alone, go down, slack, stay, be still, be slothful, be weak, and weaken. Those who wait on the Lord. Now there's a lot there, but those who wait on the Lord, wait for God to be God. And that's what we're looking at this year. As a matter of fact, uh, before church this morning, somebody was sharing some stuff right before church, and I said, be still and know that I am God. And I got a smile. I was like, yeah. And you know what? I had a chance to practice it again this week. More than once. But let me share one time with you. I got to practice. Be still and know that I am God. A while ago, they got a new manager over at the car wash. And she was a new gal. And she was out there writing tickets. And I just thought she was writing tickets. And I didn't know she was the manager. And I went up to her, to her, I said, hi, I'm Pastor Dave. I'm the pastor at the church next door. And um, the car wash, we've had a deal where they wash my cars for free. And it uh, didn't seem like a big deal, went in, you know. And at the time, they were using our parking lot, some of their employees, to park during the day. And, and she came up a few weeks later to me and said, uh, I just, you're a very arrogant man and very condescending. And uh, she went off on me. And all I was trying to do was inform her and bring her information that she wouldn't have had because the previous manager wouldn't have thought about telling her that. And I was just trying to. So I just stood there and took it. Then uh, a while after that, she said, I want to talk with you about Norm, Norm who was, who was living here. I said, okay, go ahead. And she, uh, she said, why are you so mean to Norm? I said, I was never mean to Norm. And Norm said that nobody, you or nobody at your church ever helped Norm out. Wow. Well, I said, that's just a bold-faced lie, because I personally did mul multiple things for him, and I know many other people who helped him out. She went on for a while, and then she goes, and why did you have his RV towed? I said, I didn't have his RV towed. I had nothing to do with that. I said, he made a bomb threat, and while he was in jail... His RV was sitting out on the street and somebody got tired of it or they just saw it sitting there and they came and told it. I had nothing to do with that. And finally she said, well, maybe, maybe we don't know somebody well enough when we think we do. I said, exactly. Then about three months ago, 
she comes up to me and she says, we're going to start charging you half price, $12, because someone at your church uh, was rude to me. And this person who had spoke with her, and he had warned me, he said, you know, I want you to know I spoke with the manager, I was very polite, and very kind, and very nice, but when some of their workers at the end of the day, they would take the blower and they blow off their driveway and a lot of their trash gets blown over into our slope back here in the parking lot and a lot of their trash comes into ours and he was saying, could you please not have a blow it over into our parking lot? She didn't take too kindly that. Then I got my car washed on Thursday. <laughs> and uh, she comes walking in and she goes, yeah, we're, you're not gonna get anything anymore. Uh, you're paying full price and you are a bad representation of what you were representing. Now, the younger Pastor Dave would have had a different reaction. She, and she went off on me for a little bit again on Thursday. And I just stood there and said, okay. And that was it, that was my response. I didn't do anything. Inside, I was a little more upset than I was letting on, especially that she went after me personally. And you know what I just kept saying over and over and over? Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Just relax. Just be still. Mikey, I think it's Romans 12, 19. That may be wrong. It's 13 or nine. I think it's 19. Look that up for me real fast. I'm going to read this to you real fast. I don't have it quite memorized to share it with you, or I would. But I think it's 1219. I know, he wasn't ready for this. I wasn't planning on doing this. Romans 1219. Hey, can somebody put the 30 second clock on, Mikey? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Never take your own revenge, beloved. But leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Can you give me the next verse? Quickly or not? 20 says. God is our refuge and strength. A very, no, just kidding. Okay, it goes on and it says. But if your enemy is hungry, then I'm going to want the next one too. If, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's good enough. Sometimes in life, you need to remind yourself. I don't need to get vengeance. I don't need to get back. I don't need to attack. I've shared before when I was younger, when somebody did something to me, I'd do it back twice as hard and twice as much. It was just like, you know, and it was not a mature thing. I'm not proud of it. It's just, I wish I weren't like that when I was younger. And I just stood there and I just took it and I just kept telling myself, be still and know that I am God. Let God deal with her. Now, in my younger days, I really liked the beginning of it as... Leave room for the wrath of God. So I'm like, God, bring your wrath upon her. Show yourself strong in this situation. And now I just pray for her. And I don't know what's going on in her. I don't know what's going on that's happening. And, and she wanted to be like this and go after me so much. I don't know. But it's a perfect time. And it's a perfect example of being still and knowing that he is God. Just being calm. Just let that stuff, you know, like part of the definition is to drop. Just let it drop off you. Don't hold on to it. Just let it go. Don't let it bring you down. Don't let it take your, don't let it take your mind um, captive and start thinking about it all the time. Just let it go and keep being still and knowing that He's in control and He's God. Now, uh, I read this last week, and this is from John Gill's commentary, and this is what it says about this uh, verse: "And be still that, and know that I am God." <clears throat> it says, "Is a continuation of the church's address." to the fearful among them. As before to behold the works of the Lord, so here to hearken to what he says, as follows, be still. Not that they should be like sticks and stones, stupid, indolent, and unconcerned at the commotions that were in the earth, and be unaffected with the judgments of God, and be wholly silent and inactive, 
but that they should not be fearful, nor fretful and impatient, or restless and tumultuous, but be quiet <coughs> and easy, resigned to the will of God, and live in an assured expectation of the appearance of divine providence in their layout. And know, own and acknowledge that he is God, a sovereign being, and that he does whatsoever he pleases. That he is unchangeable in his nature, purposes, promises, and covenant. That he is omnipotent, able to help them and deliver them at the last extremity. That he is omniscient, knows their persons, cases, and troubles, Amen. and how and where to hide them till the storm is over. That he is the <clears throat> all wise God who does all things after the counsel of his own will, and makes all things work together for good to them. And that he is faithful to his word and promise, and will not suffer them to be overpressed and bore down with troubles. Who further says for their encouragement and is to be hearkened to in it. We looked at the beginning of that last week, and I'm continuing on. And it says that he is unchangeable. A scripture that we already sang this morning, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. People change. We change. We can change for the better. We can change for the worse. But we change. And I'll tell you, I've changed a lot over the years. I've changed a real lot over the years. Well, like when I was young, I was really shy. And the people who see me now, I tell them that. They're like, you were shy? It's like, yeah, I was really shy when I was young. And, uh, and there's so, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about me, but I've changed a lot in so many different ways. And I pray I'm changing for the better all the time and being transformed from glory to glory in Him. And that's my prayer. But he, he is unchangeable in his nature. He's not changing. That's right. We know who he is. We can be secure that he's not going to change. He's not going to change his story. He's not going to change who he is. He's reliable. We, can, we know we can count on him. We know we can count on him every single time. Even when it seems like we can't count on him, we can still count on him. Because he is unchangeable in his nature. He is love. 1 John 4, 8 says, The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. I don't believe it's just one of his attributes, although some people believe that. I believe here when it says that God is love, that it's not just an attribute of his. He is love. Amen. As a matter of fact, further down in the uh, same chapter, verse 16, it says, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. Here it is again. God is love. Mm -hmm. And the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Even when somebody confronts you, when you feel like you have done no wrong, and they confront you four times, we still need to abide in his love because God is love. And even they may tell you that you are a bad representative of him, you still try to be a good representative of him and for him because we are his ambassadors. Yep. And so we try to be good ambassadors for him and good representatives for him. And we try to share that love. And rather, you know what? I, I'll be honest, I got close to losing it when she started attacking me. I got close to losing it and almost going off on her. And I thank God that I did and I mean that. I really thank God it didn't happen. And the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. And when I just started saying, be still and know that I am God, I just calmed yeah. down and everything just came down and bad things didn't happen. And I thank the Lord completely for that. Because we want to be sharing His love. Yeah. He can deal with her. He can, yeah. She's yeah. His. He loves her as much as He loves me. That's he can right. deal with her. That's His problem to deal with her and do with Him what He wants to do with her. So, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchanging. He's always going to be love. He's never not going to be love. There's other things about God that's not going to change either. He is unchangeable in His nature, in His purposes, 
in his promises and in his covenant. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. You've heard these and I love these. For I know the plans that I have for you. I know the purposes I have for you. You can even say, I know the covenant I have with you. He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. To give you a future and a hope. This is God's purpose for the people of God. And I'll say again, <clears throat> this was written for a per certain people at a certain time. But the context and the, that's not the word I'm looking for, the principle inference. It, inference. Not the inference. It applies to us too. That's what I'm trying to say. What he's sharing with these people who was for his, the Israelites is it's for us too. And I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but it starts with the C, I think. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. This is God's plans for us. This is God's purposes for us today. Then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. God's purpose and plan for our lives is good. He allows difficulty in there. He allows tribulation in there. He allows struggles in there. And they're actually for our good too. You know, uh, when we go through tests, we're used to going to school and taking a test and then seeing how poorly we did. Like, you know, I didn't get 100% or I didn't measure up. When God allows us to go through tests, he wants us to see how well we're doing and how strong we are. You can look at, I didn't do well in this, or you can look at, this is what God's doing in me. Yeah. And so I even went through a test that day and I was tested. I was tested a lot. I mean, there was a part of me for a little bit that wanted to turn on her and go after her and attack her. I don't mean physically. I mean, just go after her. And, and because of the Holy Spirit, I thank the Lord it didn't happen. God has good purposes and good plans for us, even in the trials, even in the testings, Amen. even in the difficulties. And I'm thankful I'm up here to share that I did it and that I had victory in that situation. Okay. And it was through the power of the Holy Spirit that I had that victory. And I, it's a good thing that I'm able to share that this morning. And I, can't, I don't have to say I did go off on her. His purposes and His promises. So, what do you do when you get a... What do you do when you get a call from your landlord that they may be selling the place you're renting that you've been renting for years and years and years and you have a really good price because they blessed you and if you have to move maybe you can't find another place you won't even be what do you do when you face these things you know within the last month i did two celebration of life services on men who passed away suddenly and unexpectedly and neither one were that old and what do you do when you come and then your husband has passed away and you have to face these really difficulties in time. And, and it's so difficult and the emotions hit you so hard and so often and, and really difficult on both women. I, I'm still praying for them all the time. What do you do when you go to the uh, doctor with your dad? When you go to the urologist with your dad? And you sit down at the urologist's office and the urologist looks because I was sitting there and I think my sister Sue was sitting there and mom was sitting there. And the urologist looked at us and said, yep, you have prostate cancer. You have six months to a year to live. Maybe a little longer, but probably six months to a year to live. What do you do when you get that kind of news? And you sit there. I remember sitting in that office and tears just started streaming down my cheeks. I just started crying really hard looking at my dad saying unless God does a miracle within six months to a year he'll probably be gone you 
You say, be still and know that I am God. Know that I have good plans for you. Amen. Know that I have good purpose for you. You're still going to cry at times. The emotions are still going to hit you. I still have dreams about my dad. In my dreams, he's completely alive. And we're interacting and talking. And the longer it goes, the less often I have him. What do you do when you face those things? That's what this whole year is all about. That's what I'm, be still and know that I am God. This is what I'm trying to get into us. Difficulties <laughs> that we face personally, let alone what's going on in the world and in the United States, yeah. spiritually and economically and all the other stuff, all the craziness that's out there and all the craziness that we're teaching our kids. I don't know about all the other states, but in California, what they're teaching our kids at such a young age. And I sit here and I see my grandkids growing up. And I'm like, what are we going to do? We can't really afford private school. I mean, how are we going to, what are we going to do with our grandkids? We can't just send them off to public school anymore, it seems like. What they're teaching them is ridiculous. It's like to the antithesis of what I believe and what I'm raising them. Not that I'm raising them, but as Papa, I'm raising them when they're at my house and trying to be an impact in their life and raise them in the Lord and have them know the Lord. And that scares the heck out of me. You know what? Be still, Dave. Be still and know that I'm in God. That I am God. I'm in control. Yes. I have good plans. I have good purposes. All things work together for good. For those who love the Lord are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. Even having your grandkids born right now, even if, you know what, Ezra's three right now. He turns four in a couple months, and then the next year he'll be going off to kindergarten. He'll be doing school somewhere. And I'm saying, God, this provision's not too big for you. You can handle this. You got this. Yeah. You know where we stand, and you're going to watch out and make sure the right things happen. He is unchangeable in his nature, in his purposes, and his promises. There's so many promises of God in the word. Are you standing on his promises? You see, God is faithful. Like I said, he's reliable. Yes. We can count on him. When he says something, when he makes a promise, he follows through with it. He does it. It gets done. There are covenants and promises that are conditional that he makes. If you, then I. If you don't, then I won't. There are conditional promises in the word that God gives us. And there are also unconditional promises. So when it's conditional, you have to hold up your end of the bargain. If you don't, it's conditional. It's not going to happen. If it's something that God wants done, he'll get it done anyway just through somebody else. Yeah. It's not like he has to have you. That Pastor Dave is the all in all and the end all in all and only Pastor Dave it has nothing to do with me. It's about who God is. That's right. But he's faithful and he's reliable. And when he makes a promise, he's going to follow through with it. It's going to happen. That's right. Stand on his promises. We used to sing a song, Standing on the Promises of God My Son. You guys remember that song, that old hymn? I remember the tune, and you don't want to hear me sing it. <laughs> the purposes, the promises that God has for us. We need them, church. We need to be standing upon them. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. That's a promise from God to you. 1 John 4.4. 4. That's right. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Let that sink in a little yeah. bit. You have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah. <laughs> like the song we sing, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. That's right. He's in there, and he's greater than Satan, who came to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> and I'm not going to start quoting a bunch of promises now, because I, start, I started thinking about doing because there's ones that I quote that I just hold on to. And when I could do it, sometimes I just start saying them out loud. Yeah. Sometimes over and over and over when I'm really going through it. Stand on his promises. 
that he is omnipotent. Yes. That he is all powerful. That he is able to help them and deliver them at the last extremity. At the very end, he can come through. Yes. It's not too big for God. What you're facing, what you're going through for each and every one of us, it's not too big for him. He is omnipotent. And because he is all powerful and omnipotent, you can stand. You can stand in faith and in his reliability and have hope. We never lose hope when we have the Lord. Yep. We always have hope because who God is and because who he is gives us that peace, allows us to have that peace that we're looking for. And the hope that we all need. If he weren't reliable, we wouldn't have the hope. But because he is, we can stand on that hope. And remember that hope is an assurance. It's not hoping like the world hopes. It's assurance. Yes. So we're assured. We're assured of our salvation. If you accepted the Lord in and you meant it, he's in. And you're going to spend eternity with him. That sets us free to go out and serve him the way he wants us to serve him with all our heart. That's right. When we understand the grace of God... That he gives to us. And all we do is receive it. When we understand his unmerited favor. And that's the only way to salvation. When we understand that. It sets us free. Yes. Like we talked about in the book of Galatians. And over and over. If you're trying to serve the law. To have God love you more. You're going to walk in guilt and shame. And condemnation and bondage. That's all that leads to. God's not going to love you any more than he loves you right now. So if you're trying to earn God's favor and God's love by keeping the law, it's just going to beat you up. But when you receive God's grace, His unmerited favor, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, that is the gift of God. When you grab onto that and you really let God's grace, His unmerited favor, you can't earn it, grab a hold of you. It sets us free to truly serve Him and to truly walk in the confidence that He wants us to be walking in. The, uh, the second celebration of life service I did, I was here, um, and uh, this guy walks in. I think he might have been the first one who came in when I was in here. And this was just a couple weeks ago. And he says, are you pastor? I said, yeah, Pastor Dave. He goes, did my um, diocese email you? I said, no, I never received an email. I got an email from... The wife saying that I may get one, but I never got one from you. He goes, am I doing the service today? I said, no, you're not doing the service today. I'm doing the service today. And then he said, um, well, will I get a chance to talk during the service? I said, we're having an open microphone, and you can share during that time. He said, okay. So uh, we were doing it, and he's a deacon in the Catholic Church. And... Uh, the man who I was, we were celebrating his life, was raised a Catholic. And then they kept saying over, he got born again saved through Calvary Chapel. And so he was on fire for the Lord. And this guy was reading the Bible every morning and trying to talk to people about it all the time. And this deacon of the Catholic Church gets up and speaks and he says, Yeah, it's true, we do need God's grace. And then he says, But you have to earn it. And he started going, you have to earn his grace. You can't just get it for free. And I was up here, and he actually had some physical issues, so I took the mic back to him. He was standing back there, and he shared what he had to share. Now, earlier I had shared, uh, because some people were talking about different things, which is fine. I said, you know what? Um, our church and the Catholic church doesn't see eye to eye on everything doctrinally and theologically. I said, but we serve the same Lord. That's right. We still serve Jesus. And we not, may not see doctrinally eye to eye on some things, but we still serve the same Lord. And so I got a chance to share. I said, you know, this is one of the areas that we don't agree upon. I said, and I quoted um, Ephesians 2 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, that no man should boast. <laughs> I said, it's only through God's unmerited favor that we are saved. I didn't get into the whole, you're going to walk in bondage and condemnation if you try to live that way. I just shared that. And I said, that's what this church believes. Then another guy got up and shared that he was Aztec. And uh, 
We believe that we don't believe in heaven. We believe in a parallel universe and you have a journey to a parallel universe. And he started sharing that. And let me tell you something, church. I want to tell you what God's word says. And you know what? If that's your belief, that's their belief. I'm okay with that. I wish you had my belief because I believe my belief is the truth, obviously. But I understand we have different beliefs. God's word says it's only, only through grace that we can be saved. That's, right. That's what God's word says. We can't earn it. It's impossible to earn it. And don't try to earn it. If you're trying to earn his love and his favor and his grace, like I said, it will lead you into guilt into shame and condemnation and bondage that leads you to the same place every single time but God's grace sets us free amen, amen. it's for freedom that Christ set us free thank you Jesus and when we're walking and living our lives that way when we do sin because we will and I'm not saying it's okay to sin I'm not giving you permission to sin but we will sin because we're human when you do, you confess it to him, you run back into his arms, and you start the communion, the fellowship, because fellowship communion gets broken when we sin. Not a relationship, we're still his child, but the sweet fellowship gets broken. So we confess it, we, we say, I'm sorry, and we get back and we run into his open arms and we keep living for him, yeah. and there's freedom there. Yeah. And Christ yeah. came to set us free. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. If you are trying to earn his salvation and his favor, you will never be still and know that he is God and you're going to spend your whole life living in fear. So walk in his grace. Thank him for his grace. Thank him that he's omnipotent, that he's all powerful. No matter what you're facing, it's not too big. And, and be a person of giving thanks. And I'm going to, like I shared last week, when thing comes your way, when tests comes your way, when trials come your way, when confrontations come your way, just keep telling yourself, be still and know that I am God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's close in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for your grace, Lord, because without it, I have nothing, Father. But with your grace and because of your grace, I'm your child. I'm a prince. And, and Lord, I thank you for that. That yes. you take even a rascal like me, Lord, and just take all my sin and wash it all away. That's how much you love us. And I thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that when I do sin and when I do mess up, that you're standing there with open arms to receive me back each and every time, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you love me that much and love us that much to do that. And while everybody's praying, people have their eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you've never asked the Lord into your life. He only comes in by invitation. If you, hasn't, if you haven't asked him in, he's not in. But if you would like to do that today, you can. And if that's you and you would like to receive the Lord this morning, I just invite you to stand up, walk down here. I'll come down. We'll pray together. You can invite him in. Be the best decision you ever make. The guilt and shame and condemnation that you've been living under be lifted and gone. You can walk in freedom. Anybody here who would like to do that this morning? Then, Father, I pray that every, each and every one of us does know you and does have a personal relationship with you. And, Father, I pray that if someone in here doesn't, today they will come to know you and have a personal relationship with you, Lord Jesus. And uh, before they even leave this building, they would come to know you that way. And if you're watching me on YouTube and you want to pray that prayer, you want to invite them, and I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your love. I need you. I confess all my sin to you. I invite you into my life. 
come in. Wash away all my sin. Make me white as snow. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me and empower me to live this life for you and your kingdom. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship.